All right. Hi again. Uh, next, I'm going to talk to you about choices when you are choosing a futures research method and then what choices you have to do after you have chosen the method. Um, I picked up this uh, picture, which is from the famous Finnish painting by Albert Jernefeld. Uh, the boy is playing on the seashore. Because I rather feel like if you read the methodology books, you might say that you have a strict order of things that you have to uh, do. Uh, and in a very technical manner in order to produce good quality output in social scientific research. But what I think, I, I think I see myself like a, like a child in a toy store uh, with these methods and you can try different methods and then you can play with the research material and get, uh, get new insights by, by this kind of a, mm, playing approach. So, let's consider future studies as a playground. Mm, well, the problem, if you think the, from the research perspective, is that the future does not exist, so you cannot observe the future at all. Uh, and what you can do, you can study past and current trends. You can uh, look for the weak signals, uh, the mega trend, emerging trends, megatrends, of the world and think what could happen in the future in the light of these uh, trends. <clears throat> uh, then you could also ask expert views of the future and especially in technical aspects you might, uh, there might be something really interesting that the people who are deep expert in the subject might know. Or you could facilitate a stakeholder discussion about the future and especially if the stakeholders have, have a power to have an effect on the uh, actualized future, then uh, this is also uh, somehow has predictive value. But the main part here is to organize people in, and help them to figure out where they are heading in the strategic work, work uh, what kind of scenarios are plausible how should our organization uh, react to these changes? <clears throat> well, before choosing the research methods, you should think about the question you are trying to find answers to. Think about it as a, in a question form, that helps you. Then think if there is a strategic point in all of this, is, are the results used somehow in strategic decision making? Uh, then you have to remember that human decisions uh, at large might either hamper your results or be included in the topic of your study. Then it's important to look wide enough. Uh, Sirka Heinonen always pro talks about the peripheral vision. I think it's a really good kind of concept. You look to the sides where what could be rise there to the field uh, that you can see clearer. Uh, be open to many types of futures, but maintain your temper and don't be fooled by too much of recent hypes in the field. And the main principle is that you would give yourself the opportunity to find something different than what you expected or what you hoped. Don't try to prove anything. That's my main message. Well, the question that you would like to answer, uh, is it an open one, explorative one, or is it something close uh, that cl uh, you want to close? something that you want to define. You want to come to some kind of particular conclusion. These are the kind of, uh, one of the main things that deviate between uh, methods. If you are doing an open study where you open up the uh, future uh, in an explorative manner, you might uh, do scenarios or images of a future. This is kind of one standard solution. But when you're making the scenarios or images of the future, you get the data. One option would be to take it from the Delphi study, 
make, for example, qualitative interviews with people. You could run a futures workshop. Uh, and then you would uh, analyze this data, for example, using the causal layered analysis framework, or you could do the morphological analysis in the futures table form, or you might, uh, if you have numeric data, you could, uh, for example, a consumer survey or a Delphi study, you could group uh, similar ideas with using cluster analysis, and then using these clusters as kind of a bunches of opinion uh, that tell you which uh, way the world is heading in the future. And the overall process might be called something like scenario planning. Of course, scenario planning is, is exhaustively discussed issue and uh, might uh, make you really <clears throat> confused sometimes, but don't be confused. It's a kind of an umbrella term. Well, if you are looking for closer uh, closer um, issues, closer questions that have uh, more well-defined answers. Uh, you could look for a preferred vision, for example, for an organization, or you might find, uh, try to get some probability estimates of particular scenarios. Then you would kind of narrow uh, the possibilities down to something which is highly probable or highly preferred. Uh, you could get data from a backcasting exercise. You could have uh, survey data, time series data uh, from statistics. Uh, and you could do the analysis. You could use technology roadmaps or visionary road mapping, deterministic modeling, what if modeling might also be available, cross-impact analysis, these type of techniques. Now, the next kind of big question, is there some kind of strategic point? Uh, well, it's good to remember that scenarios can work, uh, for example, so that it, if it's closely related to strategic planning, you might produce direct alternatives to be decided upon, or you could give good basis for strategic discussions, for example, looking at the branch uh, where you are at, and then make branch uh, uh, relevant scenarios for the future, and then think what is our organizations, our firms, uh, uh, um, ways of coping in each of the scenarios. Or are they merely like food for thought, something that it's interesting to know, something it's interesting to ponder, and sometimes it might just pop up uh, in the R&D department as a new innovation, or uh, uh, marketing people could do consumer segmentation and look more carefully, okay, actually we have this scenario, can we see it if we dig deeper to the, to the survey data that we have here? Um, well, now, then the responsibility issue, Turku School of Economics uh, has one particular principle, which is uh, responsibility and responsible business. Uh, this is responsibility in future studies. Uh, scenarios can be used and actually are used for manipulating uh, other people's opinions. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's done consciously, sometimes unconsciously, just by neglecting some views or having too narrow expert panel would kind of uh, prevent you to see what would come from the sides to the center. Uh, and then the <clears throat> be aware of this risk, this pitfall of your study and try to make, be open-minded Give yourself the opportunity to find something else that you wish to find or you, uh, or you expect to find. Now, human decisions. Well, <clears throat> human beings should, could and should and uh, can and do decide upon things. Uh, and they could change. Their value basis might change, their attitudes might change, their lifestyles might change in the future. So when you're making a future study, think what, could, what, would, what would you assume to be the same 
as before or as nowadays, and what would change in the future. Uh, then, relating to the previous slide, scenarios can be used for strategic de decision making. Is your particular study related to a particular uh, decision making process? It can be related to a, a company's strategic foresight, public organization, even non governmental organization, even your own life. You can make a uh, futures table of your career paths to the future, what are your options, and then you are the person who is deciding, so it's relevant for the decision making. Now, then of course, uh, importantly related to the responsible use for scenarios is that scenarios can have an effect on uh, how people perceive the future and what they consider as relevant future uh, image or future scenario. And so-called self-fulfilling prophecies or self-destructing prophecies are possible and sometimes even intended outcomes of the processes. Now then, the next one, look wide enough. Uh, if your own business is in the middle in this graph, uh, do not just look what is going on in our business or just not just our customers, but look at the whole branch, at least uh, where you are working or uh, where your company is working. Look at the economic trends more in general in your field. But that's not enough. You should look at what is going on at larger scale in the society. And increasingly nowadays we're also looking what's going on in the ecological environment. If you think about the climate change or climate policy issues, uh, they have a, a reflection on economic trends and perhaps your own company's innovations. Or if you're thinking about the loss of biodiversity, which is at the moment about the same uh, pace that it was during the time when the dinosaurs were extinct, uh, it's also perhaps something to be considered about. Now, finally, a checklist on method choices. Think which method you choose, then think how you're going to use it, uh, and then what is the role of this method in the decision-making process. The use of the method, think carefully what aspects you are going to study, what you are not going to study, and then when you are varying things within the future with the different scenarios, think what are the parameters or the factors if you're making a qualitative study that you vary between the different scenarios. This is extremely important decision. Actually dictates the outcomes of your study. Okay. I have probably repeated this uh, enough. The main task is you to give the opportunity to find something else that you hoped for or you expected. Thank you.